What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. Been on a bit of a holiday break the past couple weeks, so let's throw up the rundown and get right into it. First up, we have a new initiative at Swift.org called Diversity in Swift. It says uh, the Diversity in Swift work group is a group of volunteers working to make our community more approachable and inclusive. That's always great. So uh, essentially what it is right now, just beginning, just starting out, um, but it's a couple new communities on Swift.org that you can be a part of. And the purpose here, you know, this initiative is focused on further elevating a wide variety of voices and making it easier for developers to start learning or contributing to Swift regardless of their background. So those two communities you can join uh, right now, which again is just launching today, but again, just the beginning, uh, we have Women in Swift and uh, Black in Swift. And if you want instructions on how to join these communities, you can click here, which I'll have the links, of course, on the GitHub repo, uh, link in the description for that. Uh, but this will tell you how to join those communities uh, should you want to partake. Next up, Apple has released some of their own articles, tutorials uh, regarding Swift UI. So that's always nice to see. And so far, you know, the Swift UI stuff they've been putting out has been really great. And here's a few examples of what they just released. Uh, you know, here's building layouts with stack views, H stacks, V stacks, Z stacks, all that sort of stuff. But again, what I love about these articles, and if you've followed my content a lot, you know, I like, I like visual stuff. I don't know, maybe I'm just a visual learner, but when articles have nothing but like code and no visuals to see kind of like what the code is doing, I don't know, I, those are harder for me to follow along. But when I have images or diagrams, to me that makes it so much easier. And uh, Apple's uh, is kind of going that route with these kind of articles or tutorials, if you will. So uh, they've released three of them. Again, this is the first one, layouts and stack views. I'll just kind of scroll through real quick, creating performance scrollable stacks. Uh, again, we have visuals here with the code as well. And then uh, lastly, aligning views across stacks. Uh, so again, we have some first party tutorials and articles right from the horse's mouth if you want to check those out uh, regarding Swift UI. And keeping with the theme of Apple putting out content here, we have Patrick Metcalf uh, tweeting out that his team just released three really detailed talks uh, on UI performance. And it's all about like hitches in UI, right? We all want our scrolling, our UI to just be like buttery smooth, 60 frames per second, maybe even 120 frames per second if you're on the iPhone iPad Pro, maybe the iPhone Pro in the future, right now just the iPad Pro. Regardless, we want buttery smooth animation, scrolling, all that stuff. So these three videos talk about finding hitches like in your animations, how to fix them, how to optimize them. Um, but again, it's, it's really, really detailed. So if you wanna get into the weeds, uh, these videos are for you. Moving on, Apple has released an updated section of the human interface guidelines talking about how to use app clip codes. Uh, real quick note on the human interface guidelines. I recommend going through and reading it at least once a year. If you're not familiar with what it is, I'll put a link in the description to a video I did explaining it, but essentially it's Apple's like first party guidelines on how to use their stuff, right? This app clip codes is the most recent example. But why I say you should read it like once a year at least is because it's constantly being updated as things come out. For example, app clips, widgets, those didn't even exist a year ago. So again, it's constantly being updated. And here's the latest uh, app clips, how to use and interact with these app clip codes, how to display them. You know, maybe you're working on a contract for a restaurant or, or a store or something like that. Like having this knowledge of how to actually use and display these app clip codes uh, is gonna be very, very valuable. And again, they give you all sorts of like what to do, what not to do, right? It should be a minimum diameter of one inch, as you can see here. But anyway, this is, I just wanted to use this app clips thing as, as an example of why you should uh, be reading the HIG on a regular basis. Moving on, we have some app awards here. The Mac Stories Selects 2020, recognizing the best apps of the year. And this is by the Mac Stories team. And why I wanted to share this was, you know, if you're working on, uh, even if you're working for a company or you're working on your own product or project, like it's always great to get inspiration from some of the better apps out there, right? And not only does this article just give them the awards, but it kind of explains like why they got these awards, right? And the categories are best new app, best app update, best watch, best design, all that stuff. Uh, and there's a table of contents because it is quite a long one, but let's go to like best design, right? So if you're curious what designs are kind of getting these awards here, we have reader five. And again, there's a blurb about kind of the app, nice, beautiful, big, large screenshot. So you can kind of see uh, the design trends that people are enjoying. But anyway, that's the whole point of me sharing this and you checking it out is to get inspiration, uh, you know, get some ideas for your own products. Next up, we have an awesome tweet thread from McLaren Stanley here. Maybe you've seen this. 
but it's, it's the story about how Uber adopted Swift and how it was almost a complete, like, huge disaster. And, and it's an amazing story. Very, very interesting. I highly recommend you read the whole thread. It's super long. Not going to lie to you. Make sure you got some time. Um, but let's scroll back up to the beginning and I'll do my best to like sum it up. Um, but definitely go read it. It was awesome. Um, but let, let's read the tweet here to they'll kind of whet your appetite a little bit, right? All right, folks, gather around and let me tell you the story of the almost uh, the biggest engineering disaster I've ever had the misfortune of being involved in. It's a tale of politics, architecture, and the sunk cost fallacy. But really at the end of the day, it was really enlightening to think about the decision-making process when you're at scale, like Uber. Global users, like Uber's huge, right? So your engineering decisions are huge. Like for one example is they talk about, you know, they, they made the decision at this time to drop iOS 8, but they did some business calculations and that was an eight figure decision, like tens of millions of dollars decision to do that, right? So you're not, you're not making small inconsequential decisions when you're operating at this scale. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, again, it was a fascinating story. It was interesting, like the tale of politics, how their engineering uh, department or the IRS developers uh, got a little split up between, the, he calls them the Swift zealots and the Objective-C curmudgeons, right? And there was a, like an internal battle between Swift and Objective-C. Again, super interesting story story, read the thread. It was awesome. And then if you want to go even deeper, uh, here we go. Chris here did a uh, blog post about it. And actually he even says he wrote this post last week for, you know, to privately share for those asking, but then the th thread McLaren wrote blew up. So he decided to kind of polish this up and, and put it out there. Um, but it does go deeper into like the technical stuff. Like they ran into like binary size issues with the, the over the air limit, right? It used, I don't know, I think it's 200 megabytes now, but it used to be 100 megabytes. So if you wanted your app to be able to be downloaded when you're not on Wi-Fi, which it makes sense for Uber, right? You're out trying to find a car, you're not gonna be on Wi-Fi. So that was a huge deal. And how, did, how could they get their app smaller? That was a big problem. So anyway, fascinating stuff. Uh, if you wanna go uh, into the details here, this blog post is for you, but I really enjoyed this story. Check it out. Moving right along, let's talk about some indie app development here. Noah Gilmore talks about his app, Transparent App Icons, how he wrote the app in two days to kind of piggyback off the trend, right? The iOS 14 customizing your home screen trend and just talks about like how that went, right? Making small bets, right? He built the app in like two days. He did a Twitter thread about it. I think I featured that thread on a previous episode of Swift News when he was actually doing it. But now this is kind of the, the summary blog post after it's been out for a few months now, how much money it made, what he did for marketing, how the downloads went, all that stuff. So if you're interested in the, the indie development, um, definitely check this out. A couple quick points that I wanna like emphasize here is how he got this idea just by scrolling Twitter. So he saw this, like there was a thread on how to make transparent apps on iOS 14, and it was a very, very involved process. And he thought to himself, you know, users would appreciate it if they could easily do this just in an app and not have to go through this whole rigmarole that this thread had them do. And here's an interesting part. He knew the idea had some legs or, or there was a market for it because this tweet showing how to do that had like over 200,000 likes, right? So if, you, if you're wondering, does this idea, like do people even want this? There you go. So he saw that and then he immediately jumped on it and look within 48 hours, and again, he tweeted the whole thing, so I watched it in real time. He uh, had it app out on the, uh, the app store. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't the full finished product. It was the, the MVP, the absolute minimum thing. And he talks about, why he wanted to restrict himself to that, right? Because he's, you know, he knew that in order to capitalize on the iOS 14 trend, he had to release the app uh, as fast as possible, right? So he put himself on the, that constraints and, and it worked out. And here, if you do want to um, see the Twitter thread, he has a link to it here. But like he talks about by, by putting it out there in the open, he got a lot of help from the community who's interested in, in watching him, him build this. So again, uh, again, quite a long article, very detailed, but he talks about the marketing. Um, you know, he reached out to Instagram post, he kind of probably inspired by, you know, what happened to David Smith on TikTok, how Widget Smith blew up uh, by going viral. But at the end of the day, uh, the YouTubers had the most impact. And uh, he so she uh, shows the uh, chart here, right? So here's the downloads. YouTube reviews got him the biggest spike in downloads. There's the 9to5 Mac article. There's some Twitter giveaways. So again, one of the most interesting things, at least to me, about indie development is like, yeah, it's cool to build a product, but like, 
how, as the indie developer, you're not just the developer, you're the whole company, right? So how do you market it? How do you sell it? Like that's a whole other like skill set than just building the app. So again, that's always like fascinating to me. But again, he gives a, a ton of details on on how it went. I believe he's made about three thousand dollars from this this quick app that he just kind of put out on a whim so far, right? It's, it's very young in its life. But anyway, if you're interested in this kind of indie development stuff, uh, check it out. This article by Noah Gilmore, all about his you know transparent uh, app icons app. Moving on, we got a quick one from the GitHub blog. Um, you can now upload videos. It's a public beta, not fully out yet, but you can now upload mp4s and .move uh, files to issues, pull requests, and discussion comments to share like reproduction steps, design ideas, et cetera. Um, I didn't see readmes. I think it'd be really cool. You know how I, I love a good readme, you know, to be able to put videos in your readme. Hopefully that is coming, but at least for now you can put, I think this reproduction steps is, is a huge thing, especially for like the issues. Um, you can actually show the app breaking in a video and show what you did to do it. I think that'll be very, very helpful. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Thanks GitHub. Moving on to AR Corner, we have from Leah here. Uh, again, magazine cover. We've kind of seen this thing before, but this is this looks pretty cool. But again, if you're wearing uh, AR glasses, you can see like newspapers and magazine covers, what that could be like when you're wearing uh, AR glasses. One last thing in AR Kit. Oh, I don't think this is AR Kit. This is what, what Snapchat's doing with like Bitmoji and stuff like that. But the, the whole Bitmoji, you can see it's like mapped onto an entire body that's just walking around in video. If you look closely, you can see like the person, you know, it's not perfect, of course. But you can see this technology with like more iteration, more time. You can just map your whole Bitmoji to your whole body and just walk around in this like virtual world. So anyway, that would be kind of crazy. And then finally, the LOL of the week. Just a quick little little thing that gave me a chuckle. Is my code fast? No. But is it well documented? Nope. <laughs> but does it work? Also no. So anyway, that gave me a good laugh. That wraps it up for this week's episode. We'll see you in the next one.